हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर रशिदा कांचवाला प्रोफेसर गवर्नमेंट पी जी कॉलेज महू इंदौर टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट चीज फ्रॉम योर पेपर ऑफ फूड साइंस द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ टीचिंग यू अबाउट चीज इज to provide you knowledge about cheese making to give you an insight about types composition and nutritional contribution of different types of cheeses you will also learn to differentiate between cheese and different milk products and of course you will learn to cook with cheese after completion of this module students cheese is a solid food made from liquid milk when bacteria or acid or an combination of both bacteria and acid is added to milk the proteins of milk gets coagulated or clumped together which turns it into a solid mass this solid mass when further processed becomes cheese which can be stored and consumed for a long time milk proteins are the chief agents of milk curdling as we know that proteins in milk are of two type that are curd protein and whey protein curd protein is casein and whey proteins are lactalbumin and lactoglobulin lactalbumin and lactoglobulin are not concerned with cheese making the process of cheese making is centered on casein of milk let me know about casein of milk caseins are phosphoproteins these proteins are the proteins which have very low levels of secondary and tertiary structure as we know that proteins are complex structures having also quaternary structures but casein has got structures only up to tertiary levels that is it can easily be disrupted about 90% of casein exist as macro molecule this macro molecule is an aggregate of calcium and casein and this macro molecule is termed as micelle any agent which disrupts this micelle can cause aggregation or clotting of milk this clotting or aggregation can be brought up by any enzyme which comes from an a microorganism which can accidentally or incidentally be incorporated in the milk the accidental incorporation of microorganism in milk results in spoilage of milk and the incidental incorporation of microorganism in milk can cause curdling of milk as we have seen that the casein is the main protein for milk curdling we should know the properties of casein micelle before commencing to know 
about cheese making casein my cells are hydrated that is they are attached with water basically caseins are hydrophobic that is their natural tendency is to aggregate but they are negatively charged and these negative charge on them repels each other that is negative charges prevents them to aggregate so any agent which sedates the negative charge can cause aggregation or clotting of casein myself it is a wonder how a hydrophilic casein molecule becomes into a hydrophobic clump or curd we can see from a company diagram that the caseins are arranged into big molecules which have got two structures a hydrophilic polar head group and a hydrophobic non polar hydrocarbon chain conditions which sedates hydrophilic polar head group causes clumping or curdling of casein students after getting through the micellar structure of casein now we come to science of milk clotting as we know that proteins are big molecules which are found in the form of colloids in any solution protein micelles are negatively charged due to which they repel each other if any condition subdues this charge they can mate to attract each other that is they can clump with each other at isoelectric point the charge of proteins is subdued this point is ph 4.6 we know that milk is slightly basic and this basic nature of milk supports its colloidal status addition of any acid that may be acetic acid citric acid or any other acid can bring milk protein at its isoelectric point and at this point the calcium caseinate separates into casein and calcium and separation of casein brings forth its clumping and curd forming which is the base of cheese making for cheese many types of curdling agents can be used basically every curdling agent is an acid it may be derived from an enzyme or directly added to milk acids sedate negative charge and allows casein to aggregate addition of enzyme for curdling fosters one more purpose it disrupts tertiary and secondary structure of casein 
and has sense curdling or coagulation of milk therefore in many cheeses a combination of acid and enzyme is employed by first sedating and then disrupting protein structure from accompanying image we can see that how a clear liquid milk gets transformed into a curdled and non curdled part that is separation of its casein from whey protein accompanying flow chart we can see the process of cheese making for the process of cheese making first of all type of milk is decided whether it is a cow's milk buffalo milk sheep milk goat milk or any other type of milk camel milk or even mouse milk can be used for making cheese after decision of type of milk the milk is standardized that is amount of casein in the milk is standardized so can a consistent type of curd can be formed after standardization of milk it is pasteurized so as to nullify the effect of pathogens the milk is ripened that is it is kept for some time nearly 30 minutes to increase its acidity then it is renated or we can say it is curdled by any method then the curd is cut into small pieces to take out whey from it the curd is stirred to press out more whey from it the curd is then cooked and scalded to press out further more whey from it then the curd is drained in this curd salt is added to depress activity of microorganisms this salted curd is again cooked to take out more of the whey and this curd is set into molds by draining further more whey from it this is the process of simple cheese making for different type of cheeses some other processes may be employed students now we are well acquainted with the process of cheese making before proceeding to the cheese making process we must be acquainted with the types of cheeses in market various types of cheese are available they can be classed as per style texture and flavor their style texture and flavor is dependent upon many factors the first factor in it is type of milk cheese making can be can be accomplished with a variety of milks the most important of it is cow's milk although buffalo sheep and goat milk can also be used for the purpose second 
identifying factor for type of cheese is processing of milk whether it is pasteurized or not pasteurized whether curd is processed or not processed third factor is butter fat content of milk what is the amount of butter decides its feel and spreading qualities type and amount of bacteria and mold in cheese decides their flavor consistency and texture and of course aging which decides how the cheese is ripe how much it is ripe and what are the changes in it which have changed its quality so the cheeses may be grouped or classified into many types there are hundreds of types of cheeses available in the market they can be grouped according to length of aging as per length of aging perspective the cheeses may be soft and hard some cheeses are only extracted and sold and some cheeses may be aged for years second criteria for grouping is texture the cheeses may be moldable and non moldable soft cheeses are generally non moldable they are to be taken with a spoon or any other agent while hard cheeses are non moldable they have to be cut the third basis of classification is method of making cheeses may be made by addition of any acid or enzyme and the nutritional content and the qualities of cheeses definitely change with the type of curdling agent there is another base of classification of cheese that is according to type of fat and amount of fat some cheeses contain more fat and some cheeses contain less fat similarly the fat type in hard cheeses gets changed than in soft cheeses type of milk is also a factor according to which cheeses are classified generally cheeses are made of cow's milk but any other type of milk may be may also be employed cheeses can also be classified as per country of origin different countries have their distinct cheese type as we cherish swiss cheeses which have got ice within them emerald cheeses and different other types of cheeses let me come to the steps of cheese making for cheese making the first thing is decision of type of milk which we have already discussed second step in cheese making is pasteurization of milk 
soft raw cheeses can cause serious infectious diseases including listeriosis brucellosis salmonellosis and tuberculosis the us food and drug administration states that it is us law since 1944 that all raw cheeses must be aged at least 60 days or must be pasteurized although pasteurization changes the flavor of cheeses and pasteurized cheeses are often considered to have a better flavor so some manufacturers do do not opt to pasteurized all cheeses after base cheese making steps here comes chief cheese making steps the chief cheese making steps are five or they may be four depending upon type of cheese for soft cheeses the steps are curdling of milk heating of curd pressing of curd and addition of seasoning and for hard cheeses ripening is an additional process milk is curdled by acid as we know then curdled milk is heated to drain out whey it is pressed to give a shape addition of seasoning is done to retard the action of microorganisms and ripening is the process which brings many desirable changes in protein and fats of cheese which decides its quality now we come to curdling agents in cheese making the decision of curdling agent depends upon type of cheese that is for paneer making which is very sought for indian milk delicacy acidification is done only directly by addition of a acid which is generally citric acid vinegar or any other acid can be employed for the purpose cottage cheeses are generally made with the use of rennet here an incubation period is carried on long enough to develop more acid when the acid content which is expressed as lactic acid goes to 0.65 to 0.7 percent rennet action is stopped by addition of salt for softer smaller and fresher cheeses curdling is done only by starter bacteria enzymes of the bacteria converts lactose of milk into lactic acid while for some unripened cheeses milk is coagulated with two types of agents first an inoculation of culture of bacteria is added to milk and after development of some acid by bacteria a short incubation period of rennet is added and due to mixed action of both of them the taste and flavor of cheese is different 
and for most of the hard cheeses acidification at different levels with starter bacteria and rennet is completed starter bacteria convert milk sugar into lactic acid and causative ph curdles the milk when the acidity calculated as lactic acid is 0.2% rennet is added sometimes color is also added at this stage to give cheese a typical color now we come to merits and demerits of different curdling agents or we can say the style of working of different curdling agents milk curdling by rennet sets the cheese into a strong and rubbery gel while curdling with acidic coagulation provides fragile curds rennet curdling sets the milk at a lower acidity due to which the flavor making bacteria are preserved in the gel and they afterwards produce beneficial effects in cheese making milk curdling with bacterial culture has following advantages it produces a characteristic taste texture and flavor to the cheese they provide these things by production of gases acids and other compounds swiss starter cultures also include propionobacter shermani which produces carbon dioxide the gas bubbles which are produced during aging gives swiss cheese or emmental its typical texture that is i texture in which there are holes in it after curdling of milk decision about type of cheese is made whether we have to make soft or hard cheeses soft cheeses are manufactured in the following steps first of all enzyme renin is added to the milk as we know that enzyme renin is obtained from the stomach of young calves it is available in the form of liquid or tablet it can also cause milk or other proteins to clabber the clabbered milk is cut with a knife into cubes the liquid whey is drained off from the curds which are then crumbled into pieces the soft moist curds are ready for finishing steps entirely stirred and then added with cream and reconstituted added with salt which functions as a preservative pressed under weights pressed into a mold 
to give it various shapes wrapped into a cloth or sealed into a clear or colored box sealing of cheese keep out air and prevents further microbial action as well as drying out of the cheese added with cream and reconstituted added with salt which functions as a preservative pressed under weights pressed into a mold to give it various shapes wrapped into a cloth or sealed into a clear or colored box sealing of cheese keep out air and prevents further microbial action as well as drying out of the cheese after getting through the process of soft cheese making let we proceed to hard cheese making hard cheese are made after making the curd in the similar way as for the curd which is made by soft cheese made for soft cheese after curdling the processes differ for hard cheeses curdled milk is heated to temperatures in the range of 35 to 55 degree centigrade this forces most of the way from the cut curd the curd is filtered and the final amount of whey is removed by cheddaring or matting cheddaring or matting is a special type of process which rotates and turns the slabs of curd until they are sufficiently dry now this curd is taken for different processes first of all salt is added in this mass as we know the salt suppresses acid forming organisms and putrefactive organisms side by side it also hastens removal of last whey from curd the curd is then gently pressed wrapped in cheese cloth and pressed again curds are presented into a mold or form the harder the cheese has to be made the more the pressure is to be applied the pressure drives out most of the moisture from the curd the molds are designed in such a way that they allows water to escape from them pressure in the mold unifies the curds into a single solid body these are kept in maturing chambers or aging chambers 
where they are kept for a few days to several years after knowing about hard cheeses let we know what are the changes which ripening fosters in milk or in cheese a newborn cheese is usually salty and bland in flavor but when it is ripened it becomes rubbery in texture if cheeses are left to rest under controlled condition for a few days to several years microbes and enzyme transform their texture and intensify their flavor this transformation of texture is a result of breakdown of milk casein and milk fat into simple substances like amino acids amines fatty acids and their compounds after ripening some cheeses have additional bacterial and molds which are intentionally introduced in them before ripening or aging these microbes settle on the cheese and grow on stored cheeses to provide specific taste and culture in today's world prepared cultures are used to give consistent results and it also puts fever constraints on the environment of ripening cheeses ripened cheeses include soft ripened cheeses such as brie and camembert blue cheeses such as roquefort stentel and gorgonzola and rind washed cheeses such as limburger we have gone through the cheese making processes of soft and hard cheeses let we know about the cheeses which are available in the market in the market processed cheeses are available what are processed cheeses processed cheese is a natural cheese that has been ground mixed and pasteurized the heat applied during this process halts the aging of the cheese and it extends its shelf life and stabilizes flavor changes in these cheeses emulsifiers are added to prevent the separation of fat addition of emulsifiers also produces desirable slice slicing and melting qualities in the final product the processed cheese has a slightly different taste and appearance than the natural cheese now we come to a second type of cheese available in the market that is cheese spread and cheese food cheese spread has got a 
higher moisture and low fat content as the name indicates these cheese can be spread on any slice or any substance while cheese food is a product which has to be eaten at such it has got slightly lower moisture content than cheese spread but a higher moisture content than natural cheeses after knowing about cheese making process and different types of cheeses now we come to cooking with cheese before proceeding to cooking with cheese we must remember four guidelines first is heat it just long enough to melt it second is to spend to speed up cooking time grate or cut it into small pieces third is if you are using cheese in any recipe reduce fat in it reduction of fat in recipe provides sharper flavor of cheese and we when you are microwaving it be careful to not to heat it on very hot temperatures so again i am going to stress two rules to remember while cooking with cheese that is avoid prolonged cooking time and avoid excessive temperatures if we break these rules the cheese becomes tough rubbery and stringy if we overcook them then the fat from them gets separated out it becomes tough rubbery and stringy students now you must have been learned all the cheese uh, things about cheese to sum up we can say that cheese making is a science of curd making it is an art of curd handling as well there are various types of cheeses depending upon type and handling of milk various microorganisms play their role to make cheese microbial action alters taste flavor and nutritive value of milk cooking with cheese requires knowledge of basic characteristics of cheese implementation of this knowledge about cheese making is the basic of many many today's food preparations thank you